everybody, my name is Sheila Essel Reads, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Christmas book haul. I hope you're all having a great holiday season. This year I got quite a pile of books. I don't know if it's more or less than like last year or other years. It just seems like a lot, kind of in like piles around my room right now. I'm just gonna get right into it because this is going to be a little bit of a long video. I've grouped these books together in order to get myself through this list. So the first group is books that are not really gifts. It's kind of just like an oddities category. The first book is Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. This book is absolutely beautiful and I would marry it in a second. We're thinking of a spring wedding because oh my god look at the colors on this thing. Like do you see how beautiful this is? It's like it's these beautiful like neon colors and oh, oh my god. As you can probably tell from the title it is somewhat based off of Scooby-Doo which I love. I was watching it last night. I love Scooby-Doo and it also says The Hardy Boys which is like Nancy Drew which is another mystery series which I'm very interested in and you probably got that because I talk about Nancy Drew in a lot of my videos. I don't know much about this book beyond that but that's a great basis in all honesty. I'm so looking forward to reading this book in 2018. The next book is The Walled City by Ryan Grodden. I found this book at the dollar store so this was a grand total of one dollar when it's usually eighteen dollars in the United States so that is quite a steal if you're asking me. I thought that this book was about Berlin, like it's the walled city, I was thinking like the Berlin Wall. Apparently I was wrong. There are three main characters named Dai, Jin, and Mei Yi. Seems like there's crimes, drugs, and escape. Oh my. I don't really know that much besides this, but I have wanted to pick this book up for a while and just other books by Ryan Grodden, which I think is the author of Wolf by Wolf. Which I think I also thought was about Nazis and just like Germany in general, so maybe I'm just wrong about everything? very possible. The final book in this group is First We Were Four by Alexandra Sarawi. This is the book from my book club. We uh, were supposed to finish the other book, which was on my TBR for this month. I didn't really like that book. This, however, was my recommendation for the book club, so I hope it's gonna be great. It has a secret society. And the premise of it kind of reminds me of the secret history, so hopefully it will be as good as that, like a YA take on that, so maybe a little less drugs and murder, but kind of doubtful. Now we are on to the presents from friends. The first present that I want to talk about I cannot actually show you because for some reason I left it at my dorm so it's a few hours away from me. My friends John and Danny got for me it is a mug with my YouTube handle on it and I cried a little when I opened it. I had no idea what present they were getting for me. My roommate had just told me that I was going to enjoy it and I really did and I'm so excited to like feature it in my videos. But. So my roommate got me three books for Christmas and the first one is Artemis by Andy Wire. I've heard that this is kind of like a space heist, which sounds pretty cool. Apparently Artemis is the name of the city on the moon, it's a colony. I'm very against colonizing planets, fun fact, but I guess the moon is a satellite instead of a planet so maybe it's kind of like that middle ground that's okay. It's in the habitable zone, it's okay, we can probably survive there. I guess. I really don't know that much about this. I heard some mixed reviews about it. I am pretty excited about this. I really did enjoy The Martian, which was Andy Wire's other novel, even though I'm very against colonizing Mars as well. It also won the Goodreads Choice 2017 awards. I think it was in the sci-fi category, but I could be wrong on that. The next book that my roommate got for me is Beast of Extraordinary Circumstance by Ruth Emmy Lang. This book is something that I saw in someone's videos talking about it and really the cover captivated me because it's very minimalistic but just enthralled me. I was like, ooh, I really want this book. I kind of thought that it was a retelling but like an adult version instead of YA which is what I am mostly surrounded by even though I don't really read lots of YA retellings. But since I really don't know that much about it, I'm just going to read a small blurb that I found on Goodreads for it. It's the story of Waylon Gray's life from the perspective of people who knew him, loved him, and even a few who thought he was just plain weird. Although he doesn't stay in any of their lives for long, he leaves each of them with a story to tell. Stories about a boy who lives with wolves, great storms that evaporate into thin air, fireflies that make phosphorescent honey, and a house filled with spider webs and the strange man who inhabits it. That sounds pretty damn cool if you ask me. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book. The author of Forrest Gump is also the blurb on the front. I've never seen Forrest Gump or read it. I don't think I knew it was a book first. The more you, you just learn things every single day. I would just say, like to say thank you to my roommate for getting me all these books for Christmas. The final book that she got me is The Great Passage by Cheyenne Miura. This is probably pronounced incredibly wrong, but this book is just about a passion for dictionaries and words in general. I am a linguistics major. I'm thinking of declaring a double major in English, and so this book and the next two books I'm about to talk about are really where my two passions meet, I believe, because they're books about words themselves and about reading and just 
dictionaries and stuff and that really fascinates me. So now we're going into the books that my family got for me. The first thing that I would love to talk about is this S which is made of a book that my cousin got for me and it's just it's beautiful, it's decorative, I love it and I just, I'm just gonna put it back on my bookshelf. So the next two books as I mentioned are my linguistics books I suppose. The first of these is Word by Word The Secret Life of Dictionaries by Corey Stamper. This one seems less like a novel than the Great Passage, which is the book I just showed you, but it is still about that love for dictionaries. According to the Goodreads page for it, it does seem to be focused a lot on Merriam-Webster itself instead of dictionaries as a whole. And I don't really know that much about like different dictionaries and like if one of them's better or one of them's worse or anything like that, but I'm definitely interested to read this. I love the cover because it really does look like a dictionary and it has the different drawings in it. It just is beautiful and I'm very excited for this. And the final linguistics -y book on this list is The Fall of Language in the Age of English by Mine Mizumura. I saw this in someone's video, I believe. It is a very short book. Not really sure where I found this book, but I saw it. And since I really love language, I really wanted to pick it up. It seems to talk about the contrast between native languages and English, especially in this globalized world, and the brilliance of native languages, and why they're just as, if not more important than English. As a native speaker of English, I can't really relate to this that much, but I'm definitely interested in seeing this perspective. One of my greatest fears in life, which is something that we've talked about in my linguistics courses is language extinction and so I hope that this talks about that a little bit and how to combat it because I would love to combat that. It's terrifying and I am I don't know what we're gonna do. So the next group of books is graphic novels. It is only two books but I'm very excited for both of them. The first of these graphic novels is Paper Girls. This is book one it's like the first volume of it, so there are 10 issues inside of this, according to the Goodreads profile for it. This is amazing so far. I've only read one chapter of it, which I guess is one whole issue. The art style is very beautiful. So it has a lot of beautiful colors similar to Meddling Kids, and just if you think about the 80s in general, I feel like I think of neon a lot. But if I had to relate this to something, I would definitely say that it is similar to Stranger Things. So if you like Stranger Things, pick this up because it is about kids living in the 80s. This instead is like a group of four girls. So I definitely enjoy that. They are paper girls, so they're delivering papers and whilst delivering papers they discover like this weird supernatural thing that's happening. I haven't completely figured out what that is yet, where I am in this, but it's pretty freaky so far, so I'm really looking forward to continue with this. The second graphic novel that I got is Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. This is the same artist as the Scott Pilgrim series, which I haven't read. But, you know, I've seen the movie and the movie was amazing, so probably should not base my opinion off of just the movie, but it was very good. I don't really know that much about this graphic novel. I saw this in someone's channel too. I Christmas list this year was just like, oh, I saw these on booktube, can't remember who recommended them, but I get to ask for them for Christmas. But I really like the art style in this one as well. Uh, there is the main character. I guess I'm gonna figure out what that character's name is. I really don't know anything about the story, but it just, it looked really cool. It's quite a bit smaller than Paper Girls, if you look at it, and so I don't know if that's good or bad. I feel like I'm just gonna want more. I don't know if there are more. I don't know if there are more of this one either. Oh my god. So the final group of books on this list is just random books. They're YA books or fantasy or kind of just the last four books, didn't know where to put them. So here they are. The first of these books is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Like I said, I saw this book on a few booktube channels. Our main character in this is Eliza and she is a creator of a wildly popular webcomic. It's called Monsters C. One of the most popular fanfiction writer from Monsters C transfers to her school and there is kind of this like budding romance and she's a very introverted person and she starts seeing like the beauty in the outside world but at some point her identity is revealed which it seems is not something that she wants and it puts everything at risk her relationship with this new person and her relationship with her fans in general i originally was not going to pick this book up but i just i heard so many things about it and it looks like it has little snippets from other things i don't know if it's snippets of the comic or this kind of looks like instant messaging or just messaging online in general which would definitely show how she is more of a living online person. Ooh! Look what I just found. So this looks like it's from the webcomic, which is pretty exciting. I can't look at it though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for myself. The next book that I got is King Lear by William Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. Look over here, these are all my Shakespeare books. This is a very beautiful illustrated Shakespeare copy thing that I showed in one of my videos. I don't remember which one, but it was amazing. These are just my other Shakespeare novels. I'm taking a Shakespeare class next semester and I just really enjoy Shakespeare. I heard about this one. I heard that it has beautiful language just like most Shakespeare novels. I did just get a copy of Shakespeare that was like four Shakespeare tragedies in one book. 
I showed it at the end of one of my videos, but this was one of them. I really like the Folgers, Folgers editions, which are these. They're very small, so you can definitely bring them with you wherever you need to. And I think that they're very helpful because if you look on this side of the page, it has the text, and on this side it has descriptions, and it tells you what line this word is in. If you don't know what it is, then it's likely it's going to be over here, and it just has lots of like extra stuff in the front and in the back and it's just it's very helpful these are the ones that i read in high school so these are just the ones that i happen to like the second to last book that i got for christmas is the city of bones 10th anniversary edition by cassandra clare this is beautiful do you see do you see how beautiful this is look at like the sides if you like open it inside here's clary here's jace the back says all the stories are true this is simon lewis so it has these little character profiles i would say um it just shows you the other characters i have not reread city of bones in a while if you watched the first video i ever made on this channel you saw that i really did not like lord of shadows so i'm not going to be continuing with that series but i really did like the mortal Instruments series i hope to reread this someday and also i would love to read this beautiful copy because Yes, the first copy was not ugly, but it was not beautiful by any standards, in all honesty. Now they've remade them, and I don't really like those either. I wish that they all looked like this. The final book in this book haul is something that I have gotten for the past three years, because every single year one has come out, and that would be Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the illustrated edition by J.K. Rowling and illustrated by Jim Kay. I would definitely say that this one is the most beautiful, and that is not just because Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite book of the Harry Potter series, even though it is. This one shows the night bus and I just really like the color scheme of this with the purple, the black, this orangey red color and just the green of the writing. I just think this is so beautiful and I love it. So that is the end of my Christmas book haul. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you got any books this holiday season, if you bought them for yourself or if somebody gave them to you as a present, I'd love to know. And let me know if you've read any of these books. I would also love to know any of your opinions about them because as you can see, I didn't know that much about most of them. That's okay though. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!